All right, guys, we're going to catch some skipjack today, and I'm going to show you how I kind of prepare my skipjack when I want to catch a bunch to freeze or take home and freeze. Uh, number one, you need a big cooler, and this is five bags of ice. What we're going to do when we get up here ready to, to catch these jacks is to fill it up with water, and that's going to that's going to be really super, super cold ice water. And each time you catch one, put it down in there and get it down, that's going to get the, the skipjack's core to body temperature down so that it doesn't start decaying the minute it it dies and they die very quick so that's the uh, number one rule for me when I freeze want to freeze my baits is uh, super chilling as soon as I catch them and that just preserves everything a lot, lot better um, also we put salt in it I uh, haven't done that yet but we're gonna put some salt in it and make it like a salt water brine which also helps I think in preserving these baits all right I'll show you what we're uh, gonna catch these things on here as soon as we get up there hang tight to run a net that big you want to use this rig I'm using here today which is primarily a panfish Carolina rig Skipjack will make a difference. Make sure you, they push down in that. Be sure they they push down in that super cooled ice water brine. These skipjacks like this fast oxygenated water around these dams. Most of the dams on the Tennessee River and the Ohio River, and up in some some of the major tributaries off these rivers too. Current scenes, I really like current scenes, anything that attracts the bait fish. Sometimes you can nail them every cast, and other times you gotta throw a hundred times to catch one. I like to say, when you lose one at the boat, like I just did, on a slow day, it turns into work, and it's not fun. Catch one this time. There he is. I got it a little farther in that seam. My boat is swaying back and forth. Sometimes I'm able to reach. 
reach that scene and other tunnels are just shy of it. Oh, that's a big one. That's a big Tennessee River skipjack. Or a good piece of trophy catfish bait. You call it. Alright guys, what I'm doing is throwing my rig out into the heavy, the fast currents and reeling it and retrieving it at the same time as the water is kind of flowing down with it. It's, and that's where the, the one the jacks are at. And that heavy current on that real heavy seam out there. But you kind of want to throw it up river. perpendicular here with you and let the current sweep your bait down as you retreat and a lot of times they fail again it's you we're using the current to help us catch these also in the technique we're using all right guys best way I found to hold these things, grasp them so they don't flop all around, they're still going to flop and everything, is to get them between the right back behind the head and squeeze in on them gills. Uh, the fish is dying anyway, it just ain't nothing you can do about it, but you got better control on them that way. Because they will, they're just a powerhouse, a piece of muscle right there, two pound piece of muscle. That's the best way I found to hold, hold them so they don't flop all over the place. All right, the gear I'm using is a medium heavy spin casting outfit. Uh, it really don't matter about the brand, I don't think, but it's just gotta be a medium to heavy uh, size. I string it with 14 pound test from McCoy fishing line. I've got a quarter ounce sinker with a swivel tied to 25 pound mono to a jig. That's the rig I'm using today, guys. It's about a two-foot piece of leader. And the reason I use 25 is you see these, these things thrash around. They're crazy. And if you've got a light line down there, you're just going to break your line all the time. Push them in them gills and control them. They, they ain't, they're done. They're not going to do anything else as long as you like that. Squeeze in on them gills. Make sure they all get down in there and get all super cool. Now when we leave, we're going to let all this water drain, but for right now to get all these fish super cool like we're wanting to do, this is how it's got to happen. You know, people ask me where I get these skipjack at, and it's not an easy thing a lot of times. You, know, you had sometimes, even though the Ohio River has them in them, sometimes the Ohio River don't give them up, and you've got to travel. Uh, I've traveled four and a half hours to get on these fish to take back to my house and put them in the freezer. Sometimes that's, you know, if you want skipjack, fresh skipjack, that's what you got to do. is travel a little ways. The Tennessee River's probably got the best the best population of skipjack anywhere I'd say. Just whatever that is in this river to make them grow, make them multiply. The Cumberland River as well. But the old Ohio River is spotty. Spring and, and fall are good times but everywhere else in between is slow going that's why you resort to moon eye and other baits that are readily available oh he like to pull that pole out of my hand i missed it all right guys here's my last cast we want to We've got a cooler full. We want to save some for the next guy that comes around. Oh, there he is. And 
we don't want to take more than what we can need or waste so I'm gonna call it a day after this big old haul comes in my boat all right guys that's how you kiss kibjack below these dams it's just one way to do it primarily the best way I found if you do uh, that's a nice piece of bait right there all right guys as usual thanks for watching my videos and we'll see you in the next one look there I got a cooler full all right guys what we want to do now is let all that water out we really don't want to soak them in the water very long but we do want all that ice to be surrounding their whole body so we're going to turn this water loose and uh, those fish will have ice throughout them and it'll be good to go all right guys that's what it looks like when you drain all your, your water out of it now you've got ice surrounding every piece of skipjack you got now when we get back to the hotel we're going to salt this down even more we'll add another bag of ice to this and these bad boys are good good to go until we get home tomorrow I'll, I'll leave this drain open because we don't want it standing in water no longer than we would it have today. So uh, once it ends up draining, we'll leave this drain so it won't ever stand in water again. So that's the way I do it, guys. Uh, it works for me. And I've been doing it for years. So hope that might help some of you that uh, had some questions on how to preserve uh, the skipjack. Or any bait for that matter, bluegill, any of them's like that. Any of them, you just want them. Flash, cool them fast. Guys, we just got back from Alabama on our uh, skipjack trip, and we got plenty of skipjack, but now the work begins to remove them out of this ice brine into uh, baggies for freezing. I use the two gallon bags, hefties, and you really need these big bags because these big Tennessee River skipjack will barely fit in these bags so you only get five or six per bag in here all right we're going to get started this is soaked in a, a salt water brine since yesterday so i'm not going to add any salt to the bags this time around we'll be using these fairly quick this time around Let's see how many can get to a bag. All right, that's probably we can get a day of fishing out of that. All right, you see how these skipjack just ice is all surrounding them. That was due to I put all this ice water, made an ice water slush as it was what I did. And then I emptied all the water out when the fish were in it so that it, the ice surrounded the complete fish, not just on one side or the other. And I see right here like these are, there's nothing touching. The ice is not touching this side, so it's a little bit warmer. But down in here, all this stuff has been covered. It's fresh, fresh. These are actually the ones I used was going to use today to go fish with. As you can see, a couple big heads, I, I'm going to save them anyway. Sometimes they like the heads. Man, that's a big skipjack right there. Big skipjack. All right, guys, that's how you do it. Now we're going to take it from here and put it in our freezer and uh, use it when we need it. That's uh, that's how I, my little process of pro and uh, freezing skipjack for later use. Hope it helps some of you guys. See ya.